I'm transporting it in here with my wheelbarrow and plastic tubs. After getting a couple of loads poured into our foundation, we add our additional reinforcement. Natural pink granite pieces in here. To create our terrace staircase. With all the formwork in place, we can add all the stones for this first course. off your shoes and leave the winter and the pain it brings to you. Lay your head upon my shoulder, shut off your thoughts and clear your mind. This is a preview of the natural stone wall we're going to be building. But today we're going to get the concrete foundation in to get it started. There's a significant amount of stone in this wall, so we need to pour a really thick and heavy foundation to keep it solid. I'm mixing all my concrete out the front of this location due to the limited space we have back here. I'm transporting it in here with my wheelbarrow and plastic tubs. And I'm careful not to overfill the tubs so they're too heavy to pour into this form. I'm using my standard concrete mix of six part gravel sand to one part Portland cement. After getting a couple of loads poured into our foundation, we start agitating it with our trowel to get all the air out. I'm making sure I work the concrete all through the rebar mesh so we get a really good adhesion to it. I continue to add batches of concrete, but it's always important to keep agitating in between each batch. This will stop us getting what they call rock pockets because if concrete isn't agitated properly it won't set correctly and won't give you the strength that you want. After adding enough concrete to get to a depth of about 100mm we add our additional reinforcement bar. This is going to add a lot of strength to this foundation which will be needed due to the amount of stone we're going to be adding on top. I keep adding batches of concrete until we get just below the top of our form timber and then I smooth everything out with my trowel and let it set up. So yesterday we got some of our golden path gravel spread out into this area and we poured out the foundation for this stone wall we're going to add to the deck that matches our stone wall over here. So over the next week we'll be putting our natural pink granite pieces in here building them up as part of the retaining wall system. So the next stage in this terracing project is going to be to put a staircase in here to give access to the lower part of the yard. We're going to be using natural stone on this side. We're going to use the same concrete block that we use for our retaining wall over here on the right. And eventually put a retaining wall around this big lump of dirt to hold it up with concrete steps, possibly some bricks on top. To create our terrace staircase, we have to start with the foundation. So the first thing I need to do is excavate some dirt deep enough so we can get a concrete foundation starting on the bottom of this system and then we'll build up from there. Using my mattock and shovel, I'm cutting a rectangle trench across what's going to be the bottom step of our staircase. After removing enough dirt to create a flat area, it's time to get some measurements. Now that I know the length of the staircase we're going to build, I'm going to make a jig to help me keep track of the level of this foundation that we're excavating. This jig will help me manage how much dirt to remove. I don't want to over dig this foundation because we want the soil to stay compacted when we pour concrete on top of it. The height of my jig equals four of our steps plus 100 mil for our foundation. So by placing the level on top, it accurately tells me when I've dug to the right depth. Once I've dug down deep enough, I just work my way across until we run into this brick wall underneath the shed next to us. Using the jig with the spirit level and checking with my tape measure, I'm satisfied we've excavated enough dirt. I add the form we're going to be using for the foundation. Double check it against the shed. 
then lock it in with a stake. We're fixing this stake off with a screw so it stays solid. After adding a couple more stakes, backfilling it and adding some gravel base, we're ready to pour concrete. We covered pouring a concrete foundation pretty extensively earlier in this episode, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. We're going to fill our form with concrete till the top, add some steel mesh, smooth it off. I had a possum walk on it in the middle of the night. I always love little animal tracks in my concrete. The other thing I had to do in the middle of the concrete pour yesterday was sort of scratch out this path a bit. So I've added a little gravel this morning to give me a nice access point in here. I'll just go for a little walk up this path. Because of our access path that we've put in here, it's easy to get my materials down to that next terrace level that we're building. So as a bit of a warm up this morning, we're gonna move this stone down to the wall we're gonna build. Because I'm expecting a delivery of more stone today, so I've cleared this site of gravel and rock. Fall to the earth. Fall to the earth and cry. Watching you struggle with the things you should let go. And the fear strikes deep when your heart is an ocean. And the plan she keeps are an open book Run away with me You know my arms are open Let's spin around at the speed of sound Till we combust Like ashes and dust Whenever I transport materials in I use it as an opportunity to prepare for the future construction of the materials. Here I'm laying out all the stone on the edge of this path opposite where we're going to be building this stone wall. This will make it really convenient to be able to turn around, see all the stones laid out and be able to select the right size I'm looking for. Just let it go Just let it go for a lifeless ordinary waits for you And the fear strikes deep when your heart is an ocean And the plans she keeps are an open book Run away I left some of the large cube shaped stones till very last because we'll be using them at the base of this wall and also in the corners. And the fear strikes deep when your heart is an ocean And the plan she keeps are an open book tarpaulin down for our materials to be dumped on so they won't get mixed in with grass and dirt underneath. This can contaminate our concrete and create a weak concrete mix. So this is all the concrete we're going to need for the next part of our project. One of the ingredients we're going to need for our dry stone wall are small gravel chips for filling in between the cracks. So I'm bringing in a bag of those gravel chips and then I'll be ready to start the process of getting the first course of this stone wall in. I'm giving all our stone a thorough washing. I want to remove any sand and dust, as this is part of the process of getting the concrete to stick to them really well. After I've finished washing my stones, it's a good time to take my morning break after moving all that stone in. 
and enjoy the horses we have here in the paddock behind this construction site. Cause I've got your back And I'll break the fall There's just no need to worry anymore You cross the line With all our materials ready and in place It's time to start the construction of this wall These stone walls don't have a fixed design system But there are certain formulas I use to come up with a good looking wall one of them is to have nice large stones in the first bottom course. This gives it actual structure and visual structure at the same time. I'm spending a bit of time adjusting this stone to get it in the right place. We want the flat part of the stone in line with the front of our wall. And in this particular case, the stone has to fit around the structure of the deck. There's a concrete pylon we have to be able to fit this stone in front of. After positioning it correctly, the next thing is to get it vertical. We're using packers here to get the stone sitting up flat to the front of the wall. I'm trying out different thickness packers and wedging them behind the stone to get it sitting vertical. I'm now ready to attach our first piece of form timber on the front of this wall. going to keep all the stones in the bottom course in line with each other and give us a nice flat look to our wall. Before I get too many stones in my way I want to add some more screws to the back of this treated timber just like we did when we we're doing the foundation. This is going to help lock the timber into the concrete as we back pour the concrete around the stone. I'm going to be fixing a dozen or so of these screws in. Like I did in the foundation, I'm using up the old screws I reuse when I'm building my forms. Here I'm fitting a wedge piece of stone into this void, trying to get it tight and settled in. Sometimes you wiggle it about until you get a nice tight fit. With the cornerstone tightly locked in, we work our way along the wall, putting one stone next to the other. We're roughly trying to match the height of this formwork, which will make it easier when we're backfilling it with concrete. Whilst I still have a gap in my formwork, I want to put a large cornerstone on the other side. Sometimes it's easier putting these large stones in before you put the formwork in, so you don't have to lift them over the top of the formwork. This time I'm using a concrete wedge to get this stone sitting vertical instead of a packer. This stone has the perfect shape for a corner starter stone with its cubed form and its 90 degree right angle bottom. With this extra large stone in place, I complete the missing part of our formwork that's going to hold all our stones flat. With all the formwork in place, we can add all the stones for this first course. We often start from each corner and work our way into the middle. I do one final check over over all the stones to make sure they're in the right position before we move on to the final stage, which is adding gravel between the cracks in the stones. This helps keep the concrete hidden, which is part of our dry stone wall look to not see the concrete at all. And I'll break the fall. There's just no need to worry anymore You cross the line And I change the course And I'll break the fall Oh, I'll break the fall Join me in the next episode as we finish this first course of our stone wall by backfilling it with concrete There's just no need to worry anymore the line and I change the course oh I'll break the fall oh I'll break the fall whoa, 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 whoa. thanks for joining me this week in my YouTube channel check the link below and while you're at it hit the subscribe button or make a comment so I can help you with your future construction solutions and don't forget to follow our channel for more ideas and how-to tips for home and garden projects